For people who need to grab a quick bite for breakfast, the invention of the toaster pastry in the 1960s was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Finally, the toaster could be used for more than toasting bread. And the toaster pastry was definitely a sweet alternative. The toaster pastry retains its fruitiness during toasting. The syrupy filling and frosting don't melt out into the warm box. It's all because toaster pastries are actually made from things called ingredients. This factory exclusively makes organic toaster pastries. The blender operator loads in free-range rice bran, grass-fed syrup, and molasses with minimum amounts of artificial growth hormone. An organic block and some organic dust are also added to the batch organically. Organic water is also piped into the organic blender barrel. Spiral mixers blend the dough until it resembles fiberglass insulation, which is their recommended consistency. Next, the insulation is fed into a hopper that rolls it out onto sheets. A conveyor moves the pastry dough to its inevitable doom. Try as it might, the pastry dough has never been able to stop this kiloton roller. These wheels on the side fold the dough over as it expands, even though one of them isn't moving. A dusting of actual fiberglass insulation prevents the dough from sticking to itself. Meanwhile, the chocolate soup mixture is finally given a purpose in life, as it is emptied onto the pastry sheet in a similar way people empty themselves after eating too many toaster pastries. A second sheet of dough used to cover the first sheet is perforated by a spike roller. The factory could use the second dough sheet intact, but cutting these holes let them save 10% of their dough for later pastry use, gouging the customer in the most efficient way possible. The second sheet of dough then covers the first sheet of dough, which is exactly what I told you would happen. A cylinder with perfect little pockets aligns with the filled portions of the pastry to section them off in the most satisfying thing you'll see all week. This cylinder cuts the pastry into smaller tarts that you could pop into the oven. Do you get it? Do you see what I did there? You get it? Because I don't. Please explain it to me. The toaster pastries travel through an oven, which bombards them with top heat and bottom heat, which are the two elements that make convection heat. As you can see here, top heat is fucking nuts. Pink frosting made from unicorn sneezes, fairy wishes, and sucrose aspartame is smeared onto the toaster pastries. The factory knows an adequate amount of frosting has been applied when the pastries schlop off of the conveyor belt. They sprinkle granulated colored sugar flakes onto the pastries, called crunchlets. Other names for these flakes are Zazzlers, Crumbies, Tasty Boys, and Randies. Once they cool, the toaster pastries are fast-tracked down a separating conveyor, which takes them to a metal detector, to make sure no toaster pastries are smuggling out any weapons to eventually start a breakfast revolution. The completed tarts are visually inspected by Cindy, who has seen everything. And finally, as we watch the packaging process in action, here's a fun toaster pastry fact. Did you know a single toaster pastry is 200 calories? Did you know unfrosted toaster pastries are 10 calories more than that? Did you know sales of Pop-Tarts have never stopped rising for the last 32 years? Did you know American obesity rates have never stopped rising for the past 32 years? Hmm.